Hey everybody, it's the Board Game Blogger. Today I'm here to review New Himat. Now this is a wonderful, wonderful auction game. It's basically primarily auction. Uh, there's really no other mechanics besides the auction and negotiating with other players. But it, it's wonderful. This is, in my opinion, the best auction game that I've ever played. It's by a small German publisher and it doesn't have an English release. Rules are simply in German. Um, I have no idea how they're written because I don't speak German. There is, however, uh, a good uh, English translation that's been put up on Board Game Geek. It doesn't come with the game, but you can uh, print it off and it explains the rules uh, pretty well. So kudos to the person who translated them on Board Game Geek and or uploaded them. I don't remember that person's name at this moment. Um, so apologies, but it's definitely, thank you. Now the, just a wonderful, wonderful auction game, all about sort of negotiation and timing. And uh, it's a closed economy. So the amount of money that's in the game uh, remains in the game. You're not gonna be paying money to the bank, but you pay it to other players. You do have the feature of sort of secreting away money in a Swiss bank account, uh, which is an interesting mechanic. Normally everyone will start with $12 million. Uh, everything is bid in a minimum of $1 million. Uh, but on your turn you can choose to secrete away uh, a million in the Swiss bank account. Um, at the end of the game money isn't worth anything for victory points unless you've stashed it away in your Swiss bank account. So that's, that's a neat, neat little mechanic, uh, but it does sort of take away money from the closed economy. Components are, you know, it's not, you know, this isn't a fantastically produced game. This isn't a fantasy flight production. It's all just, you know, wooden pieces. It's good, it's manageable, and then you have that nice little tiny board. Um, but I'm sure you're eager to see sort of how the mechanics work um, I think it's a fantastic game. It plays quicker. You should be able to play this in under an hour. Uh, the rule book suggests there's sort of a campaign where you play three times in a row and you're sort of developing three neighborhoods in a row. If that's what uh, New Hamat is. You're sort of, everyone is a, a building contractor and you're, you're basically building a block of flats in a neighborhood. And what you're trying to do is make sure that the neighborhood that you're constructing and that you've invested heavily in is completed and that your opponents are foiled. And you know, I've seen people win this game who aren't actually invested in building anything, they're just spending their money to foil other people. And that's just, it's a, such a neat, neat system. Uh, such interesting decisions and just a really fun, fun, exciting game. Uh, I can't rave highly enough about how good this is as an auction game. Plays quick in under an hour. Is two to five players, um, but two is worthless. Uh, if, if you're looking for a two-player game, look elsewhere. Uh, if, you know, if you just play with your spouse and you're like, hey, this, this sounds good, um, I, I cannot recommend it as, as a two-player game. It's no good. Uh, it's really best with the full five, but I think it plays okay with three or four, but really this game shines with the full five players. Um, but let's take a look at how the game itself plays. So here's the board on setup. We have the sort of the main road with the three rows of flats. We have a river here. And so initially only the first four uh, plots of land can be built. Uh, anything beyond the river cannot be constructed. This can be changed by auctioning off one of these blocks. This has three pips and it can move the construction up to three spots. So we could close it in here so there's only one on this plot because you're taking out three blocks. Or we can expand the plots. So there's now seven for that row. Uh, there's one with two notches that does two, one that does one, a cancellation block which will cancel out an expansion so if we use this cancel block that knocks that off and it's down to four. With the main mechanism of the game is you're auctioning off either 
one of these specialty things. There's also the mayor that I'll get to. You then auction off the actual building pieces and you can auction off uh, roofs as well which complete the piece and so there's sort of hidden in the bag you auction it off this is a zero value roof. We'll be taking turns putting off things for auction. The very first time a color is auctioned off the player who wins that will get that color and they'll show they're in charge of that color for the rest of the game and that will then for the completed buildings will score them positive points if they're in control of negative uh, in their control of buildings that have not been completed it will net them negative points so for instance let's say this has been auctioned off the blue five if we look here there's a couple of different plots there's ones that have these white picket fences these are houses uh, designated for houses only so if you put a block in there you cannot then put another block on top it's a one-story block only one-story building if however this was built here then this can go on top of it the rule is that only a lower number can go on top of a higher number so currently this is controlled by blue the blue player now this uh, building will be controlled by the red player and because it's a one there cannot be any other block put on top the way the auction works is any random uh, roof can be auctioned off any of the specialty ones can be auctioned off and then the six blocks on the outside can be auctioned off that means these three and these three let's say the green five's already been auctioned off this now opens up the yellow six for auction so you're sort of aware what can be coming up for auction and as you can see not all colors and numbers are distributed there it's going to be a random distribution each time uh, three rows of eight and you're going to have a different distribution each time and so some colors are going to have more blocks and potentially more valuable here there's only going to be three white blocks people might judge the value there differently however they're lower numbers there's a one and a two easier to say steal somebody else's uh, building that they've put into it so now the mechanism of the game let's say we've, we've played a little bit and we've got a couple of constructions occurring and let's say we're already already a little bit through the game we've got this capped off with a roof and that's where we currently are now the game is going to end a couple of ways either once all of these blocks have been purchased the game will end once two rows have been completed with buildings with roofs put on top of them or once all 12 roofs have 12 roofs have been auctioned off because you can choose to auction off a roof and then discard it and not actually use the roof and that can be advantageous to some players who have accumulated a lot of money uh, stashed it away and simply ensure that blocks cannot be completed what will happen is once a full block is completed those are all worth positive points right now if the game were to end uh, immediately all of these points are going to be negative because they're not in a completed block of three so here we have blue is going to score negative five points because there's no roof modifier and here purple is going to score negative nine points because it's the six of the green and then the three and now purple is in control because they're the highest up on the building and that's going to be nine points negative for them let's say for instance however we've got a little bit more construction that's occurred and there are roofs on all of these buildings now these are all going to be score positive points so here now it is 14 points for purple uh, the roofs are all red color that's 
doesn't correspond to the red blocks or to ownership of a color. And then here green is scoring 11 points and this is zero roof modifier so yellow scores one. However these uncompleted blocks because there's not a full four and there's no specialty modifiers red is going to score negative six points and yellow will score negative six points. There's also the mayor here which you can put him on one of the three different blocks and he is going to modify and basically double the point value either for positive or negative. So if he's put here that's negative 12 points for yellow. If he's put here all of these houses are going to be doubled in value positively because they were able to complete the block. What's neat about the auction system though is you can choose when you're auctioning off and spending some money you can choose to simply discard, the winner can discard the block uh, instead of place it which is a neat system. Now the way the auction works is it's going to be everyone's turn uh, to in you know turn order to propose an auction. So first player will propose an auction, uh, the auction will occur, they can then immediately place or discard whatever they've auctioned, whatever the winner uh, has been auctioned. And then the next player will propose an auction, whoever wins that auction can immediately place or discard the item. Now the way the auction works is the auction player will say I'm auctioning off this green three. It's a legal move to auction because he's not grabbing from the middle here or one of these specialty things. I'm auctioning off the green three and now in turn order players will make a bid. Now the bid that is made here cannot be raised so if, if the player in turn order clockwise says I'm proposing to bid two and then somebody else bids three uh, that person who bid two can no longer raise his bid. So it's really gauging on what are these other players going to do. So let's say uh, I say I'm proposing to auction the green three. There's a bit of two, there's a bit of five, there's a bit of seven, and then it comes back to the auctioneer. So the high bid is seven. If the auctioneer wants, they can choose to accept the seven bid. They then take the seven million dollars from the opposing player, goes into their cash, and the player who won gets to either place the three somewhere it's eligible. You can't put it here because there hasn't been construction here yet, but that would be a legitimate place. And or the, the player who wins can choose to simply, no, I'm discarding this. I don't like this green three. I'm not the green player. Um, I don't want to get them points because I think that's a low value. I don't think anyone's going to put a two or one on top and I don't want them getting points. Or let's say I win this and ho, oh, I know this row is not going to be completed. I want them to get some negative points. I'm going to put it there to ensure that that blocks. I don't think this blocks getting completed, but I want the green player to get some negative points. Now, if for instance, however, as the auctioneer, I really wanted this green three. I can choose to meet that seven bid by the opposing player and pay the opposing player seven million dollars. I would, you know, count it out, give them the seven million, and I get to place the green three. So it's a neat auction mechanism where I can match the highest bidder as the auctioneer to keep the place by myself, but then I pay the highest bidder. So it's it's really neat in seeing how people bid for things how they're going to place the blocks. Are they discarding it? Are they playing to try to get themselves points? Are they trying to put it in a row they don't think is going to be completed? Let's say, you know, I'm going to throw this down here and then at a different time extend the row to here to basically ensure that it's not getting completed uh, because all of these blocks are going to be exhausted first or these two rows are going to complete first or 12 roofs have been auctioned off. Just a really neat, really fantastic auction system. If you're at all interested in auction games, um, you got to take a look at this. Even if you don't like auction games. I normally don't like auction games when that's just one of the mechanisms in the game. Uh, but because this is a pure auction game, I, I really love it. I, I'm really enjoying this game. It's fantastic. Uh, it's a small German publisher, Chili Spiel, but uh, what a fantastic game.
Anyway, till next time on the Board Game Blog.